Welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another Transfer Talk live stream. There's quite a bit to get through today, especially the big news that Jetson Fernandez has completed his medical uh, at Tottenham's training ground ahead of an 18 month loan move from Benfica. Um, we're going to be talking about that plus much more including Serge Aurier who could be subject to a bid from AC Milan. Uh, the latest on Krzysztof Piantek after the rumours on, on that front seem to have died down plus uh, a few players who could be loaned out from Tottenham, mainly Kyle Walker-Peters and Jack Clark. Um, so I just want to welcome everything, everyone to the stream as well, DJ Samuel, Matthew Hogg, uh, Kevin uh, and everyone else who is watching. Um, it's been a, a pretty busy day down at uh, Hotspur Way, there's, there's no doubt about that and it does seem as though an announcement for Jetson Fernandez to join Tottenham is imminent and we could get this announcement as early as tomorrow morning. Um, I suppose the, the main source that we'll be looking at for this is, as always, Sky Sports News. And they've been keeping us up to date on this one throughout the day. Uh, they reported late last night that he was due to fly into London uh, either today or tomorrow to um, complete that move to Spurs. And then early this morning they said he is there having his medical. Uh, he has completed that. There's, there's no, uh, there was no problems in the medical. And it does seem as though all that's left to do is for them to go through the formalities, uh, his media requirements, as well as talking to Spurs TV, um, and everything like that to, to so we can announce this one hopefully it will be announced before the game tomorrow as I expect it would be and he will be presented to the the home crowd ahead of the the game against Middlesbrough uh, now looking into the the details of this deal um, it is an initial 18 month loan deal and there's uh, some varying reports on how much the option to buy in that deal is and it, it is really likely that there, there is an option to buy in that contract um, the initial ones the initial rumors were um, it was going to be closer to what West Ham had agreed to pay if he had joined them. That's about £33 million. But unfortunately, it does look like it will be a lot more than that. Uh, Sky Sports saying it's about €65 million, Euro, which is about £56 million. And from various reports around Europe, seem to be agreeing with that. And it does seem as though it will be um, in and around that £56 million mark if we do want to make that signing permanent uh, next June. Um, look, I'll be honest, I, I don't know too much about the player. I mean, I'm not, I don't watch the league in us at all. Um, <clears throat> looking at his, his stats this season, he's played 17% of uh, Benfica's minutes this season. He's only made seven league appearances. He's only 30, started 13% of their games. So, I mean, you can't say he's a really important player for them. You can't say he's a, a key player in their starting 11 because he simply isn't. But um, I, I do feel as though it's a move that uh, Mourinho must really have wanted to get through because, um, you know, Daniel Levy wouldn't fork out that kind of money if, if there was no need. And... I, mean, I just kind of have to trust that he is the player who um, who will sort out our, our midfield problems. Now, who he is as a footballer, uh, he has played typically in a central midfield role, not attacking, not defending, just kind of sitting in the middle. He also can play on the right. But I think, I was speaking to, I think it was Jay Spurs before the stream, they're saying it, it just seems as though because of the problems that we have, it, it would have to be uh, him coming in in a more defensive role to try and sort out our situation there. Because if you look at the players that we do have in that position, you've Musa Sissoko now is out until April, um, which I suppose is the main reason why we are moving for this transfer now. Um, you know, as we heard very early on in the window, uh, we were going to be reactive rather than proactive in this window. And we've certainly reacted to this injury to Musa Sissoko. Um, Eric Dyer, he's always suffering with injuries and also his form hasn't been great. You've Tongi and Dambele, who's, who's in and out of the, the current starting eleven. Uh, Harry Wings struggling for form this year. It, it's somewhere that we really do need to strengthen and hopefully Jetson Fernandez is the player who can come in and and sort out that issue there. Um, now look, again, it does seem as though an announcement on this one is imminent. I'm just looking at the re latest report from Sky Sports News on their uh, transfer centre. And if we can just find it quickly here, they said uh, Benfica midfielder Jetson Fernandez has completed his medical ahead of his move to Tottenham. A formal announcement on his move is expected in the next 24 hours. Jetson will join on an 18 month loan deal and Tottenham have an option to buy for 56 million. So that will be um, next June, June 2021. If we do want to make that move permanent, it'll cost 56 million pounds. Now, it's very interesting. This is the second move in six months that we have made where it is um, an initial loan deal with an option to buy after that. But that could potentially be very interesting in our pursuit of a striker this window because, um, you know, I personally wasn't aware of this, but there were some reports, I think it might have been football.london that said, uh, we now have, you can only have two lone players in your 11, uh, in, the prem in your squad in the Premier League. And because we haven't made that move for Giovanni Lo Celso permanent just yet, uh, him and Fernandez would make up those two players. And any striker that we are looking to bring in this window, presuming uh, we don't complete that Lo Celso move, we don't make a permanent this window, uh, we would have to sign a striker on a permanent deal. Um, now, 
the name that has been thrown around quite a bit and the one that it does seem as though Tottenham did make an offer for was AC Milan's uh, striker Christoph Piantic. Now, given uh, AC Milan's newfound interest in Serge Aurier, it'll be interesting to see if the teams go about any sort of a swap deal um, there for those two players. It does look as though uh, AC Milan won £30 million for Piantek to recoup what they paid for him in last year, uh, last January when they signed him from Genoa. But Tottenham apparently want around £25 million for Serge Aurier. So if if the rumours are true and that both teams are interested in each other's players, um, I think there there could be room for uh, some sort of swap deal there. But I imagine Tottenham would have to send a bit of cash AC Milan's way as well. Um, now, it is a bit surprising that AC Milan are so keen to sign Serge Aurier and that they are preparing a bid of about £15 million uh, given that they already have two players in that position, now they have Calabria and one other one whose name is escaping me right now. But it's it's I'm not surprised that there is a team looking for Aurier and that we are potentially uh, ready to let him go. But it is just a bit surprising that it is actually um, it is actually AC Milan who are uh, looking into this one. Um, Owen Evans saying been formally agreed since half five, but the club haven't uh, officially confirmed it. Uh, and that seems to be the case. You know, it always is. They have to once everything is done, they have to do your interview with the club. Uh, obviously signing all the contract all the agents fees there's a lot more than just agreeing a deal and wages with the player um, and it was the case last deadline day as well when we signed La Celso and Sessegnon um, you know we the deal I think the window closed at 5 o'clock and the deal was confirmed I think around 6 but looking back in some pictures from throughout the day they had La Celso um, in and around the squad uh, as they were training during the day having a meal with the team and stuff like that and getting to know his new teammates so I suppose it is very possible that Jetson Fernandez has actually already signed for Spurs but there's the formalities that do need to be um, do need to be looked at before they can actually confirm that deal. Um, now, uh, going back to Piantec as well, th this one seems to have died down a bit. Um, I'm not really sure where why it has died down, but there were reports last week from, I think it was it might have been Fabrizio Romano or maybe um, some other Sky Italy correspondent about uh, us having two bids turned down for Piantec. Now we made a video about this uh, late last week as well. The first deal, I think, was an offer to sign him on loan, which, of course, now isn't going to be possible if this Jetson Fernandez deal goes through. And the second one was, um, I think it was uh, Victor Wanyama and Juan Foyth going the other way, potentially, um, with some cash. I'm not entirely sure, but AC Milan quickly turned that down. And they, they just want their £30 million back because they've brought in Zlatan Ibrahimovic now. And with Piantek's form this season, he's only scored four goals in 18 games. He's a player that they, they do want to get rid of. They want him off the wage book. And they just want their money back, which, I mean, isn't too much to ask. I mean, Piantek is a fantastic footballer. And just looking at his rec uh, record with Genoa uh, late last year, I think he was there for six months and he scored, might have been 20 goals in, in 21 games or something. Um, a fantastic record. And uh, he's a player who, look, even though he's, he's really struggled with, um, with AC Milan this season, you, you can't ignore the record that he does have. He scored, I think, 84 goals in just over 200 professional games. Uh, he's made a couple of uh, caps for, for Poland as well and you have to look and kind of recognise that the whole AC Milan team is really struggling at the moment. Last I checked they were 13th in the Serie A which isn't a strong league at all so you, you kind of have to look at the, the whole situation uh, before judging Piontek as a player which I think is also what you do have to look at uh, for Jetson Fernandez. and uh, I said something, I saw someone there, uh, someone pointing out that Jetson Fernandez has fallen out with the current Benfica manager which is uh, probably why he hasn't had much game time this year. He's obviously an exceptional footballer. If there are teams like um, like Chelsea uh, so keen to get the deal done, but at the end of the day, he has chosen Tottenham, and I think we need to give him and uh, Christoph Piantek a bit of leeway before kind of judging them too early, because that does seem to be a thing that Tottenham fans do. It's you know as soon as we see a player coming in, it's the whole Danny Rose comment saying if we have to Google him, we don't want him. But I feel like we do need to look into these players and give him a chance because look, remember signing Deli Ali. Um, we bought him in January, loaned him back to MK Dons. So people were thinking, you know, why are we spending five million on a on a League One player? And he came in, and I think in his first appearance, he scored against Leicester. And you know, from that from that on, it has been history. I know his form dropped for a year or two there, and he's kind of back in a bit of a, a slump right now. But you you can't just judge a transfer off uh, your your first thoughts on it. Tongi and Dombele, we thought would work out a lot better than he has already. And I know he is going to have a lot of time. He's going to have a, a big chance to try and turn it around kind of presuming his relationship with Mourinho isn't as bad as it may appear. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, if these deals do get over the line, they will be the, the best deals that we have made. Because as well, this is Jose Mourinho's first signing, first and potentially second signing as Tottenham manager. And you know, I, I wouldn't be a, uh, an expert on his previous transfer uh, record and stuff like that. 
But I think we do have to trust that they are getting the right players in. And again, if Levy is forking out potentially £56 million next summer, uh, you'd have to assume that he uh, there is a, a really good reason to sign this player. Um, now, I see a few people there talking about Jack Grealish. Um, I, I think we're in a very different situation now to when we were that uh, when we were when we almost signed him from Aston Villa that summer when we, when we didn't sign anyone and I think in, in a way we're just willing to spend more money on players now and it, I think he was more of a Pochettino signing um, and I don't think he's someone that Mourinho will be looking into especially given the fact that we do need to address other positions right now um, you know uh, as Masai Debate says our formation is too hollow in the middle as Ex- uh, Expressions Oozing said when he was on Sky Sports last week we're at Bagel FC we have absolutely nothing in the middle and Jensen Fernandez would be more uh, likely to fix that than uh, someone like Jack Grealish. Now, don't get me wrong, Grealish is a really talented player. Um, I love watching him play, and he's scored some great goals for Villa this season, but um, I, I really don't think he is the answer to our problems right now. I know with Christian Eriksen going, um, we could potentially be getting someone um, in for him. And as Spurs fan is saying, have you seen the Ficino from Inter could be involved in the Eriksen deal? Personally, I think he's an amazing player. Um, now, Matthias Ficino... Uh, again, he's not someone that I would know a lot about, but having seen him play a few times, I think you know if we're going to get rid of it, uh, Christian Eriksen, he's not a bad player to get back in. Uh, he's 28 years old, uh, a centre midfielder, plays of course with Inter Milan. He's from Uruguay. Um, if Eriksen goes, obviously he's it's going to be a really small transfer fee. He only has six months left in his contract. Um, if we can get Vecino in for him, I would be happy with a straight swap because... You know, we, we always run the risk of Inter Milan just approaching him and uh, Christian Eriksen personally and agreeing a pre-contract to uh, sign in the summer. Now Sky Sports were reporting that uh, Inter Milan have made an offer to Christian Eriksen's agent. Um, I'm not sure if that is to try and get a deal done this window or if it is a pre-contract deal um, for them to, them to sign him in the summer. But personally, a straight swap for Vecino and Eriksen would be ideal for us right now. Uh, Eriksen, he wants to leave. We know he wants to leave. Um, Jose Mourinho all but confirmed that in his press conference today, even though I suppose we, we did know that already. Um, Mourinho was saying he knows a player in his situation isn't gonna uh, isn't gonna always be in the top of his game and things like that. And basically confirmed it is his departure is imminent. Um, he said he, he will actually be playing tomorrow night against Middlesbrough, which I, I personally find interesting. Um, he also a few other things he said. Vertonghen and Tanganga will both be starting as well. Just a quick insight into the team that will be playing there, but. Um, yeah, look, it, there's just so much to go, so much to talk about in this window, and the thing that's kind of annoying me is every every sort of rumour that goes out, whether it's someone coming in or someone going out, generally the response from Tottenham fans is completely negative. And you can understand with our transfer record in the last few years, some of the players that we did bring in, um, they have gone wrong, but I, I personally just don't see why you just straight away write off a transfer and straight away assume it's just going to go horribly wrong. And again, someone asked about Jensen Fernandez. Just to recap, um, Fernandez is basically all but confirmed. Um, as Sky Sports have said, Benfica midfielder Jensen Fernandez has completed his medical ahead of his move to Tottenham. Uh, a formal announcement is expected in the next 24 hours. It's an 18 month loan deal with an option to buy for £56 million. So, Tottenham getting this deal done, uh, particularly very early in this window, uh, compared to what we usually do. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's another one or two moves to follow that. Um, then moving on to another bit of news uh, about uh, a departure from Tottenham that is Jack Clark. Um, of course, we signed him in the summer from Leeds and initially uh, immediately loaned them straight straight back to Leeds. Um, there's recalled him this window. He's only played I think one uh, time in the league for Leeds this season and two appearances in the EFL Cup as well. But it does look as though he's gone back out on loan now, as we expected. Um, there was a number of teams interested in him. Middlesbrough were one of them. I think Fulham and Millwall maybe were also thrown about, but it does look like he will be joining QPR uh, on a loan deal this month. And interestingly, if he does join QPR in the next couple of days, he could actually make his day before them against uh, Leeds at the weekend, which I think could certainly be a very interesting one. But look, it's it's not a surprise and there's not much to say about it other than it's great that he will be going back down to uh, a level of football that he is used to. Um, and you'd imagine he will be getting uh, a lot much, he'd be get, get a much bigger chance to get first team football uh, with QPR than he would with Leeds because I think QPR, I'm not entirely sure, but I do think they're um, in and around the relegation, jo- relegation zone. Have a quick look here at the table just to kind of see where they are. You know, Leeds, uh, as they always are in this part of the season, really, in the top two, looking for automatic promotion. Um, Jack Clark just didn't seem to be anywhere near the top of uh, Marcelo Bielsa's list of players that he does want in that team. And QPR are sitting 15th at the moment. They're 10 points clear of the relegation zone, so probably safe there. 
Um, so that's a good uh, environment for Clark to go into. Not much pressure uh, in terms of getting results every week. Um, so it's good to see him going out and you would imagine again that he will be getting a lot more game time down there. Um, another player who could be going out on loan is uh, Kyle Walker-Peters and this one again just seems as though uh, it's only a matter of time before this one is confirmed. Roy Hodgson even spoke about him after the game against Arsenal on Saturday which players don't use, or managers don't really do um, about players that they could potentially be signing um, and he said it's one they're confident they can get over the line and I think for both clubs it's a great deal. Um, you know, Walker Peters isn't getting much time at Tottenham, so to get him out into another Premier League team, which I think is important for someone who already has played Premier League football, uh, and get him some game time down there for Palace, and Palace get to have uh, a better right back than what they what they do have at their uh, disposal right now. And to be honest, you can't really rule Palace out of uh, European football uh, moving into the European spots this season either, so it'd be good for them to uh, try and make that push. I don't think they will get it, but they're only a point behind us right now, um, so... I mean, it is it is a possibility and he'll certain, certainly play a big part in that. Uh, John Fitzpatrick saying, Would it be fair to say we can forget about finishing in the top six this season? We've been overrated for years now. Um, no, we certainly can't rule that out yet. I wouldn't even rule out top four yet. I don't think it's likely, but the Premier League has been absolutely crazy over the last couple of years. Um, I think we're eight or nine points behind Chelsea right now and it's certainly looking unlikely and you can definitely say that Chelsea are in the are in pole position to get that fourth spot. Um but as Masai debate says, it depends on our January business. If we can get, um, if we can get this deal for Jetson Fernandez on, which it looks like we have, if we can get in a striker, uh, Mourinho potentially wants two strikers from this window, um, and maybe a defender. It doesn't look as though Mourinho is prioritizing defense this year. But if Walker Peters goes out to Palace and then Aurier does make that move to AC Milan, I imagine we'll go in uh, pretty hard for Max Ahrens to try and bring him in. Uh, of course, the latest on him is that Norwich seem unlikely to let him go this window, but a bid of about £30 million should be enough to convince them uh, to let the player go. Tottenham probably won't prioritise that, probably won't entertain it at all, unless uh, Serge Aurier does get his move to AC Milan, which according to London could happen. Um, just to recap on that as well, uh, Football.London reporting earlier today that AC Milan are preparing a £15 million bid for Serge Aurier. Um, Tottenham may hold out for about £25 million, but... Uh, you know, 10 million in the difference there it wouldn't be the the hardest thing in the world to um to get that deal done um john fitzpatrick saying uh without kane we haven't a chance uh let's be real look i mean we didn't have kane last year we made it to champions league final i mean i'm not one of those who thinks we're a better team without him he's our our top goal scorer you know he's uh, one of the best strikers in the world um we can't say we're better without him but i do think we have a chance without him because again if we get in another striker potentially piantek um, it all depends on this month, I think, and we do have to kind of remember as well that we do have Jose Mourinho in charge now, and he's worked miracles before. I mean, he won the Champions League with Porto, so uh, I wouldn't rule it out. I, I, I do not think it's likely. I would not be uh, saying, oh, we're definitely going to get it, because I don't think we will, but we can't rule it out just yet. Um, Alfie C, how long until Jetson is announced? Uh, I, I think it will be tomorrow. Um, when, when this news really started heating up about him earlier today, I kind of thought it might happen today. But um, the under-23s are actually in action at the moment, so I doubt they'd um, make that announcement as one of the teams are playing. Uh, and with the game tomorrow night at home to Middlesbrough, I think it'll be early tomorrow uh, that that deal is announced and they can unveil him at the stadium uh, at probably at half-time in that game against Middlesbrough. Um, Jay Spurs saying, Would you rather finish in fifth or sixth or out of European spots and rebuild? That's actually an interesting question. Would we rather Europa League or nothing at all? Um... You know, I don't know, to be honest, I think if we do end up in the Europa League next season, we we would certainly be one of the favourites to win it because, again, getting a bit of business done this January and then getting some more business done in um in, in the summer. I think if we do end up in the uh, Europa League next season, it, it is definitely a competition we can win. But I, I, I think, you know, it's honestly, honestly something I haven't thought about. Just ask, asking you in the chat as well, do you think, um, would you rather Europa League or no European competition at all? And personally, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to decide because, you know, obviously we want to be in Europe. We want to be in, in, at the best level that we can. Um, you know, look, maybe at Chelsea that year, they finished 10th. Uh, they, I know they won the Champions League as well. But um, it, it, it sometimes it's good to have that one really bad season. So you, so you can try and rebuild. And, you know, sometimes when teams have, they don't have European competition for a year, they finish well in the league. And, you know, it's, it's one that I'll definitely have to think about. But right now, I'm not too sure what I'd say on that. Uh, Shamir Jelani saying, to be honest, Getson Fernandez is a risk because of the lack of experience and the pressure to be standing midfield player. Uh, why not be guaranteed class? And again, that just comes back to the 
the type of player that Tottenham are looking for. And Mourinho made this very clear when he was asked about the Bruno Fernandes links back in December. And he said Fernandes, uh, Bruno Fernandes isn't the type of player that we're looking for. Um, I think he said as well he's out of our out of uh, our range financially as well. But he said we're looking more for younger players that we can build up to become players maybe at the level of Bruno Fernandes. So for, uh, Jensen Fernandes definitely falls into a lot of categories of players that we are looking for. And typically Tottenham do sign young players. And you know, if you're looking at the ones that we have there right now, Tang Ndambele is actually the same age as Jensen Fernandes, which I think is very easy to forget. I know he has a bit more experience, but he's been thrown straight into the team. And when he plays, he does well. Um, and a lot of young players have done that for us, mainly uh, throughout that time that Pochettino was at the club. But I wouldn't be too concerned about his lack of experience or putting too much pressure on him. Uh, but again, it, it all remains to be seen what will happen with him. Um, Kevin is saying to bring back Bale would be awesome too, although his manager already told that he won't leave this winter or, uh, nor the following summer transfer window. Uh, this is one that I think died down pretty quickly this window, but it is the same every single window being linked to Gareth Bale. Um, highly unlikely for that to go through this window. Uh, Real Madrid have already said they're not signing anybody this window, so... Uh, them letting some players go will be quite unlikely as well. Um, Udo was saying, I think we need a massive overhaul in the midfield, plus we need a good centre-back, goalkeeper, right-back, left-back and a striker. And I think you kind of summing up there the problem that we do have. Every position is weak at the moment. Um, uh, and as Shamir said, it's Daniel Levy, remember, that probably won't happen. But there is a lot in that squad that needs to be addressed right now. Uh, we need a backup striker for Kane. We need a centre-back with uh, Jan Vertonghen's future still in doubt. And even if he does say him and Alderweire are not the players that they were a couple of seasons ago, uh, maybe a young, energetic right, uh, centre-back could improve there. Um, our full-backs, I think, regardless of whether or not Danny Rose or Serge Aurier leave, we do need to improve um, on those positions. Um, I think Silver Surfers there saying Bruno Fernandes confirmed for Man United. Um, I'm not sure if that's gone through just yet, but... It's a move that we're all expecting to happen. Uh, we were looking for Fernandes in the summer and he said as recently as a couple of weeks ago that the only team he would have gone to in the summer was Tottenham and even the Sporting Lisbon uh, president said the only team they received a genuine offer from uh, was Tottenham as well. But it, he just didn't seem to be uh, a target for Jose Mourinho and Manchester United, to be fair to them, they have swooped in there and they've got that deal done. Um, whether or not it's been confirmed yet, I, I don't know, but it is one that you'd expect to be done uh, over the next couple of weeks. Or the next couple of days. Um, Carl saying, any valid validity behind the Gabriel Barbosa rumours? Um, I'm not too sure about Barbosa. I haven't really seen anything from, I suppose, the the uh, sources that I would call the most reliable. I haven't seen anything on that. I think it's just another one of those strikers' names that's been thrown around. Um, of course, obviously, I, I could be wrong, and I, I hope to be wrong, because he's a, a pretty decent striker, and I think any striker at this stage who's, who has played at the top European level um, would be a good option for us, but personally, I, I don't think there is much truth to those rumours, but it could be something that Tottenham do look at later in the window. Uh, Wayne saying, don't you think we should prioritise in getting a centre-back? Um, I don't think that should be a priority just yet. I mean, it was really encouraging the performance Jaffa Tanganga put in against Liverpool yesterday. Um, now, with Oliver Oyeril signing that new contract, Devinson Sanchez, is a, a, he's a good player. He's not uh, one of the best centre-backs in the league, but he's a good player. I think we do need to address the midfield issues first and foremost, and it obviously the club do seem to be doing that. Um, I I think we do need to get a centre back, but it wouldn't be uh, top of the list of priorities priorities in my opinion. Uh, the realist thing should have got Bruno Fernandez and Dybala in the summer. All the deadwood should have gone, and we would have been sitting top four. Uh, Levy's to blame. Look at us now scrambling around for mediocre players. Um, yeah, it, it you do, do kind of have to think how different would things be if we gotten those deals for Bruno Fernandez and Dybala over the line in the summer. Um, and it look unfortunately it does seem to be as though there was a really fine line between uh, that deal actually getting done and of course what ended up happening with neither of them joining the club with Bruno Fernandes we'd made an offer of 60 million pounds which is what uh, Sporting Lisbon wanted but um, Daniel Levy offered it only in installments and they wanted all the money up front I think there was actually a clause in Fernandes's contract a release clause that if we did offer 60 million pounds up front uh, they would have had no choice but to accept it um, so that one is really quite frustrating. I mean, Bruno Fernandes last season, he scored something like 32 goals and uh, registered 19 assists, which for a midfield player is absolutely sensational numbers. And then with Paolo Dybala, you know, those famous image rights getting in the way of that one. Um, it's it's really tough to think about because they're two world-class midfielders. And, you know, that could have allowed us to get rid of Eriksen in the summer as well, which, um, you know, if we had players like so Fernandes, Dybala, Ali, uh, I don't know if La Celsa would have come in um, as well as them, but... Uh, I think it, you know if 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 it was a choice of Fernandez, Dybala, or Lacelso, we probably would have gone with Fernandez and Dybala, and then Son, Lucas, maybe Tolomela in there as well. 
this could have been a very, very different season and you know, potentially Pochettino could still have been at the club. But of course, we'll never know uh, about that just yet. Uh, Bradley Coombe saying Charlie Aston would be a good backup for Kane. And I'm kind of liking this. Uh, I'm kind of liking these rumours about uh, us being linked with some, I wouldn't say veteran, but some really experienced Premier League strikers. Uh, Charlie Aston, Danny Ings being one of them, Christian Benteke. I wouldn't exactly take Benteke, but it's the kind of profile, the the type of player that he is that I'd love to see us sign. You know, looking at Ings and Aston, especially two players who have played in the Premier League. I think Ings probably being a better option right now. Already sold, already scored um, 14 league goals this season in a Southampton team that's really struggling down at the bottom of the table. Uh, Ings could be a really, really good signing if we do go for him, but I, I don't think he's someone that Southampton would let go now because he's probably their best chance of uh, steering clear of relegation this season. And also, no, he's already kind of had an opportunity at one of the big teams when he was at Liverpool and he, he didn't quite uh, do as well as some people might have expected. But I am really interested in those links of that kind of style of player. Um, but again, I, I don't know if it is something that will happen. I think if we are going to strike, sign a striker this window, uh, it more than likely will be Christoph Piantek, but... Of course, there's plenty of time for that to change. There's plenty of room for developments on, on all those fronts. Um, we've uh, Owen Evans saying, Levy haters have short memories, best training ground and stadium in Europe. Uh, said now he'd invest in players and back that statement with a decent window in the summer. And that is an argument that has really been dividing uh, Tottenham fans uh, throughout, ever since that new training ground came in and the stadium was announced and stuff. And you know, Levy... Enoch and Levy have invested a lot of money into this team, into this uh, club with the new training ground and the new stadium. But, you know, people make the argument that, you know, I'd rather be winning trophies in the old White Hart Lane than sitting eighth in the in the new stadium. And, you know, it's it's kind of hard to, I suppose it's not easy to pick which one of those you would choose. I mean, obviously you choose the, the trophies and stuff, but it's it's really hard to say that if you had put that money into the team, that uh, we will be doing well right now because you only have to look at Manchester United and Everton to kind of see that investment doesn't always mean success. If you're looking at the amount of money United have spent since they uh, sacked or since Sir Alex Ferguson retired, um, it was be six, seven, eight hundred million pounds, and they haven't really won anything of note. There's a few FA Cups, a Europa League, and I think a Community Shield in there or something. They haven't really won anything great, and Everton spent over five hundred million pounds in the last four years, and look at where they are now. Another just after bringing in an outstanding manager in Carlo Ancelotti but they haven't even come close to European football. So investment in the squad doesn't always mean success and it doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. So you kind of have to wonder, uh, did they make the right decision in building this new stadium, this new training ground? And while we would prefer to see improvement on the pitch, you do kind of have to acknowledge and recognise that Tottenham Hotspur is a bigger club than it ever was before. It's a bigger brand than it ever has been. And that, I suppose, is entirely down to Daniel Levy. And even though we mightn't uh, think that is the best thing for the club, at the end of the day, it is a business that he's running and with this uh, increased publicity and all that stuff, we will get more money in and then that money may be invested into the transfer window. And as you say, spending, I, was, I think maybe 140 million, including the potential uh, fee to make that La Celso deal permanent, that is a lot of money, especially for Tottenham. And I think unfortunately that, that kind of investment in the squad did come a year late. It was that summer where we didn't sign anyone that kind of slowed things down and it may ultimately have cost Pochettino his job, but... You know, it's it's a it's a very interesting argument. Were we right to invest in the facilities or should we have invested in the squad first? And I mean, looking at that last year, we spent at White Hart Lane winning 17 of our 19 games uh, at home. We finished with 86 points in the league. It felt as though we were really tro really close to that first trophy and potentially a Premier League title and uh, going to Wembley for a year and a half and then not signing those players really slowed down the momentum. And unfortunately, that could have been, the new stadium could have been what has got us into the position where we are right now. But again, it's it's impossible to say, you know, we're never going to know for sure. Um, Justin Martin saying, why did Levy waste his time and everyone else is going for those players and letting the deals fall through because of the image rights and installments issues? Surely he was aware of them. Um, oh, he definitely would have been aware of them, but, you know, with him, he's, he's always going to negotiate until the last minute. Um, and I, I, I don't think he let, I don't think he wasted anyone's time. I think it, he did get other deals done. He got that Celso deal done. Um, which is very important and maybe that is why we held on to Ericsson over the summer because we didn't have uh, another attacking midfielder coming in um, but it, it it does seem as though those two deals were really really close especially that Dybala deal because it, it's basically all but confirmed that he was in North London on deadline day trying to get that one done um, but it was the image rights that unfortunately got in the way of that and it's personally something I've never heard before um, with, with any transfer like that but it, it's, I suppose, a typical Tottenham thing to happen, that you agree, agree a deal with the club, you agree a deal with the player, 
and then it's something that just doesn't usually crop up that does get in the way um and there was actually talk that uh we we potentially uh, settled that issue with the image rights company for Dybala on deadline day but Daniel Levy then went back to Juventus and offered a different sort of deal to them. I think it was a couple, couple of million pounds less, but a different structure to the deal as well. And that allowed Juventus to pull out of the deal because they, they actually hadn't had a, they hadn't signed a replacement. They were looking to get Mauro Icardi from Inter Milan, but he's ended up on loan at PSG. Um, so I'm sure Juventus were very happy when Daniel Levy came back, tried to change the deal and allowed them to pull out of that one. Um, but it, I'd just love to know what would have happened if we had got those uh, two deals it, uh, done. Oh, and Evan's saying with Levy, it's not a process that happens overnight. He's built the foundations for success with the investments in the club. We just have to have faith that we'll continue to progress. And, I mean, that's what it is. It is a business at the end of the day. And now there's going to be a whole lot more money coming into this club uh, than there ever has been before. And hopefully that can be reinvested on the pitch. And there are some people kind of making the point that with all the stuff they've done over the last few years, it's increased the value of the uh, the club than more than uh, players on the pitch would have. So, you know, potentially this is Enoch or Daniel Levy preparing to sell the club. But these are only these, I suppose, conspiracy theories that always go around um, with, with football and things like that. Um, Chris saying stadium was the right decision. We'll always need players, which is a great point. Um, you don't get much chance to kind of build the sort of facilities that we have built now. It's, you know, one of the best stadiums in the world, if not the best stadium in the world. And there are, I mean, I think even uh, Jurgen Klopp said that himself. Uh, Everyone is saying it about the stadium. That there's no doubt it is among the best in the world. Um, but we're always going to need players. So, you know, maybe it was the right decision. Jay Spurs is asking, would you take Edinson Cavani? Um, I'm not too sure about Cavani, to be honest. I know a few fans have been throwing his name around. It hasn't been... Um, I don't think it's been uh, rumours, media rumours about us potentially signing him. It's been more fans saying this could be a good option for us. Um, he is 32 and he's had a, a, a really, really good career. Um... I think, is he still with PSG at the moment? Not entirely sure. Um, he's certainly not p uh, playing for PSG. Uh, they have uh, Icardi, Kylian Mbappe and Neymar who are uh, really performing well uh, this season. Was, uh, Cavani is still at PSG. Um, I doubt he's made many appearances this season, but um, I suppose if we are looking for a short-term replacement for Harry Kane to <clears throat> kind of see us through this period where he is injured, potentially making that La Celso deal permanent and bringing Cavani on loan could be an option. Um, but... I don't think I would prioritise Cavani. I think now that we are addressing that situation and we are getting a striker, we might as well uh, go for someone who, who can be a long-term solution because Cavani, 32 years of age, you know, we'll be back in this situation in another uh, one or two years where we need to sign another backup striker and we mightn't have the, I don't want to call it a luxury, but we mightn't have a situation where you know, we can promise a player first-team football for at least three months because we know Kane is going to be out injured and you know, we're looking at the potential signing of Alvaro Morata a few years back when he said himself, he wanted to join Tottenham and he was close to joining them, but he said no because he knew he wouldn't get that first team football over Harry Kane and he uh, eventually ended up at Chelsea. So I think now we just need to invest in a striker that can be, not long term, but someone that we could have for maybe two, three, four years because we can promise them first team football now, which you won't always be able to do. Um, so I keep coming back to it. I do think Piontek is the best option for us uh, at the moment. Uh, Kyle King saying Aaron's has to come uh, and... I, I do think that will depend on the Serge Aurier move if he is actually going to end up at AC Milan. If he does go, we will absolutely have to sign a right back. And as I said in my video a while ago, talking about this potential Aurier deal, Max Irons will be top of the list of priorities for Tottenham. Uh, Norwich wanting about £30 million. They would be unlikely to let him go for anything less than that because they are trying to steer clear of relegation and that would be worth a lot more money to them than one player would. Um, but I think if we do make the right offer, uh, they will be willing to let him go. But... It depends on whether or not Aurier leaves and if we can come to an agreement with AC Milan. Uh, just to recap on that news from earlier today, uh, it's an exclusive to Alistair Gold and Football.London. Um, they've said that AC Milan are preparing a £15 million bid for Serge Aurier. They do have two right backs in their team already, but they are looking for um, a bit of competition in that position. Uh, Tottenham expected to hold out for about £25 million, but you know it, it wouldn't be the end of the world if Aurier did leave. As I said, I'm not personally not entirely convinced as to whether I want him to stay or not, but I wouldn't be exactly gutted if he did go. Um, and Gosa asking, so who are we likely to sign at the moment? We need a right back, or right back has a bad last pass. Um, likely at the moment, the only one, the only player that we can say we're likely to sign at the moment is of course Jensen Fernandez. That's a done deal. Uh, it is only a matter of waiting for that official announcement now, which I would expect to come uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, in terms of uh, positions that we may be looking to improve on, it is striker. I think is probably the the best one for us right now. Um, 
McCain out injured, as Sky Sports said earlier in the window, we're looking to be reactive, not proactive. And we are reacting to the Sissoko injury by bringing in um, Jetson Fernandez, and we're reacting to the Kane injury by uh, looking for a striker. Again, potentially Christoph Piantek. There are other names being thrown about there. Um, you're regarding him, and how have you been? I'm enjoying the transfer window, really, and it's, it's not something you can say quite often. But um, I, I do think we will make uh, a number of signings this window. And uh, as Max Duke is asking, how close is the Jetson Fernandez deal? Um, it's all but confirmed. I think it's done. Uh, Sky Sports, the latest they've put up on that is, uh, just getting the report here, uh, Benfica midfielder Jetson Fernandez has completed his medical ahead of his move to Tottenham. A formal announcement is expected in the next 24 hours. He will join on an initial 18-month loan deal with an option to buy for £56 million in uh, June or July of next year. Uh, that one, I, I'd assume it's done. I'd assume they're just going through the media formalities now or potentially waiting till tomorrow morning to announce that deal as the under-23s are in action against Derby in the uh, Premier League 2 at the moment. Um, but look, this is shaping up to be a potentially really exciting transfer window. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, perhaps, that it does have to be injuries and departures that uh, make us sign these players. But uh, Noy's just saying here, we need two centre-forwards. Aurier has a big issue with his technique. Sell Toby, Eriksson and Mora. I feel there won't be a high demand for Mora soon. Um, yeah, Lucas, he's a very, very inconsistent player and... Look, I love having him in the team. I do really like him. But I think if we are looking to make it to that, that next level, um, I'm not entirely sure he would be the best player to have as a, a first-team player, I suppose. But yeah, as I was saying, it's shaping up to be a very interesting transfer window. Um, I can't imagine there's going to be any important first-team players leaving. It's kind of the first uh, the first window where we've had where there's not links with you know Harry Kane leaving, uh, Deli Ali going home and son. We usually do have rumours about these players. But I think... This, I suppose this is also the first window where we do have players who actually are likely to leave, Christian Eriksen especially. Um, a quick update on him. Uh, it, it looks inevitable that he will end up at Inter Milan, but whether or not that is um, this window or the summer remains to be seen. It's all to do with uh, the negotiations between the two clubs. There are reports that Inter Milan have offered Tottenham Matthias Ficino in a straight swap for Christian Eriksen. Um, but Sky Sports are reporting that uh, Inter Milan have made an offer to Christian Eriksen's agent now, that could be for a pre-contract agreement uh, for him to go for free in the summer, which I think is the worst-case scenario for Tottenham. Um, you'd rather get in a fee of either £17 million or a straight swap for Matthias Vicino this window rather than holding him for the rest of the season, even though he's not playing well for us, um, and then letting him go for, for nothing at the end of the year. You want to recoup some sort of uh, fee or player if we are going to let him go. Um, Max Duke said, do you think Spurs will make the Lascelles deal permanent? Uh, that that's a very interesting one and I, I don't know I think if they were going to made a, make a permanent this window I think they would have done it by now because you know might as well get the deal done and as I was saying we can only have two lone players in our team and now with the signing of Jetson Fernandez, if we are going to get a striker if our current squad uh, stays the same uh, it would have to be in a permanent deal but if we do make that Lo deal permanent not only would it save us money from doing it in the summer but it would also free up a place for potentially to sign another player on a loan with an option to buy um which if we do do that, it probably wouldn't be Piantec, but you know, I think it just would be better to save a bit of money on a Celso and, um, and kind of keep our options open for a striker. Um, Kyle King saying, why don't you do some more live streams after games? I usually work at the weekends. Um, I, I work on football matches as well, so I, I'm typically at work or leaving to work when the Tottenham games end. Um, but I, I, will get, I will do live streams whenever I can after the games. Um, unfortunately, I just can't do it as much. Um, uh, and Ghost was saying, if Ericsson goes, who will take our set pieces? Will be in trouble. A team without a dead ball specialist. Well, I think we have a problem with Ericsson on the set pieces right now because he hasn't been a dead ball specialist for for a couple of years now. He certainly was that in the past, but it's one of the main parts of his game that has really uh, declined to uh, absolute mediocrity. Uh, and as Aura Guardian says, he can't be the first man most of the time. Um, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. We've had Harry Winks in set pieces a bit this season and a bit last season as well. Lamella takes some of them when he's not injured. Um, but I, I don't think that would be our. I don't think we should have any concerns about Christian Eriksen leaving the club because you know we'd be officially losing him, but we've kind of lost the player that he was for about two years now. Um, I I'd, I'd look forward to him leaving the club, and it hurts me to say it because he's a player who's been so good for us and has done so much for us, but he's kind of ruined his reputation and ruined you know kind of what he was for Tottenham um, from the drop the drop in his form over the last few years and the comments he's made about wanting to leave. Um, let's take the last question here from Kostakis um, Aurier to AC Milan again uh, Football.London reported earlier today that AC Milan are weighing up a £15 million bid for Serge Aurier to add more competition in the right back space in their squad 
uh, Tottenham will probably hold out for about twenty five million pounds. But I'm sure they will. If AC Milan do make their offer, there will be negotiations there, and I think there is potential for that deal to go through. I wouldn't say again that it's likely, but I think there is potential for that move there. And then I think that would see us moving in for Max Ahrens and potentially trying to get a deal done uh, this window to get him in. But again, only if we do lose Serge Aurier. Um, Look, uh, if you have enjoyed this stream, uh, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Um, look, I, I really enjoy doing these uh, transfer streams and I, I, I thank everyone who does watch them. I'm just having a quick look here uh, if my laptop loads. Um, we've had over five people joining us, 500 people joining us throughout the stream. Uh, if you haven't enjoyed it again, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you are new to the channel, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.